sometimes in the lab, uh, you'll be working with chemicals that are uh, noxious or they give off vapors that have a, a bad smell or could be even dangerous to you. Um, on that note, let's make sure we understand what the word volatile means. People misunderstand the word volatile all the time. Volatile doesn't necessarily mean dangerous. Um, I know your ex-girlfriend might be volatile in that way, but that's, that's different. In chemistry, volatile just means that it's a liquid that evaporates easily. And if you think about that, that actually makes sense as to why that is usually dangerous. Because if this is a liquid that evaporates easily and it's a toxic liquid, you are now uh, breathing that in very easily. Um, or if it's a chemical that evaporates very easily and is combustible, that is also a dangerous volatile liquid. But some volatile liquids or, or things are not dangerous, like perfumes. Perfumes are volatile. So don't, don't misinterpret what the word volatile actually means. Volatile just means it evaporates easily. And in the chemistry lab, that usually means it's dangerous. So what do you do if you do have a volatile uh, liquid? Well, one thing you can use is this, this monstrosity here called a fume hood. A fume hood is this box that's all self-contained. If you can see up top there, it has a pipe and then a fan on the, on the roof that draws the air up and, and uh, takes it to be filtered and, and dispersed outside. All right. And so if you're working with something that's incredibly volatile, something that um, you don't want even a whiff of, then you will work with it inside. All right, but keep in mind of a few things. One, you do need to turn the fume hood on. When the fume hood is on, and you can probably hear, it is now drawing air up and taking it to uh, the roof. And if there's anything in there that you're working with that is open, you really should keep it on. Be aware that this big slidey door thing is called a sash. And a sash has appropriate places it should be. For example, some of them are marked with a maximum. You really shouldn't go above a certain point because I guess the idea is if it's too high up, then it's not really doing its job. You're being able to let the, the volatiles escape everywhere. Uh, also be aware that if it's too low and you're constricting your movement, you might actually be giving yourself uh, in more danger because you might actually knock something over. So be aware of that that you gotta find that perfect place for you. Also note that some fume hoods, not this one, you're not actually supposed to close all the way because it creates a vacuum when it's turned on and, and can damage to have the fan. Not this one, this particular model looks like it has little uh, gaps in here that allows it to work. Another interesting thing about this model is it has these cute little doors that you can open and access if you don't want to mess with the sash. Just make sure that when you close it, it goes back to the appropriate place. And this one's indicated by a smiley face. So sometimes in the lab, um, you might be dealing with something that might not be noxious enough that you need a fume hood, but you might actually just be at a, a normal uh, lab table. Well, in that case, uh, you might want to use a procedure called wafting. All right. So the first thing you want to do is don your safety goggles. As always, and should be stated, and when you have an object, usually it could be a flask, it could be a could be a test tube, but uh, let's say you're trying to smell something. And some labs have you smell things. There's a lab that I do with my students that they're supposed to smell the object. Um, there's an appropriate way to do that. And sometimes you're just doing it as an, like an investigative uh, procedure. But what you don't want to do is go full bore on that thing. Like if you get really close to that and you angle it towards you, you get a strong enough hit of that, it could uh, cause some damage in your, in your uh, respiratory system. A, a quick story of this was a student I was... Um, doing uh, observations out of high school and the teacher was doing an experiment with ammonium chloride. Now, if you've never smelled ammonium chloride, it is a unique smell. It does not smell good. And if you're maybe nice to your teacher and ask politely, they can demonstrate the smell for you because it's just unique. It's hard to describe. And he, they're doing the demonstration and the student took it and the teacher said, won't you smell it? And he just went full on that thing, right? Um, almost like a, he had a visible reaction, started coughing really bad, um, nasty stuff. So if a teacher asked ask you to smell something. The proper procedure is called, like I said, a waft. You want to angle it away from you in case it reacts and, and shoots out. And you want to grab the air in front and just pull it gently back. You don't need to wave it at yourself. Just gently pull it back and then, you know, keep smelling. And eventually it's going to be a strong enough smell. You're going to smell it. All right. So you just do that right there. It's called wafting. Can be done with a flask. Often is done with a test tube as well or you bring it back towards you, you can smell. So once again, this is wafting, and when you do it at a lab station as opposed to a uh, fume hood and can be used to safely um, uh, smell a, uh, an odor that the professor or the instructor wants you to do.
Some of you keen-eyed observers notice this bad boy in the background. I just want to take a moment to talk about this. This is called a snorkel. It is a, uh, a device that acts like the fume hood and creates a suction right through here that draws the fume up and out uh, the top. If you're lucky enough to be to school with this, then congratulations, that's awesome. Most schools you're gonna be, especially high schools and middle schools are not gonna have this, but maybe some of you at universities will start to see these and I think they're just fantastic. They are manipulatable. You can actually change the position of the um, joints to a certain degree. And there's a little uh, on off lever on the side here and you kick that up like that and it's on. And you can bring this all the way down to the table and that way you can work at the table um, without having the limitations of humans. So an awesome piece of machine, this is called a snorkel.